is the Cyberpunk 2077 2.1 update worth playing? Is it enough for you to either revisit the game or buy it? Let's find out in this video. As always, this is my honest take and these videos seem to be received quite well because I don't just kiss the ass of CD Projekt Red and I give my honest views, which could save you some money and more importantly, your time. So what is so good about this update? So the first thing we have here is the Metro system. This is the main feature most people have a rod on about. And I don't know why this wasn't in the game on release. And let's be honest, it should have been. However, it is cool to travel on the Metro and it helps with the world building. And when you enter the Metro and decide where you want to go, you pretty much just get a loading screen and then you spawn inside the train and you can't actually get up and walk around which kind of sucks and you're sort of just locked to the chair so it does get boring very quickly i also saw objects clip through the carriage which was a bit of a bummer not the end of the world but it might take you out of the experience a bit if you see parts of the track passing through the train and into the crackhead next to you at least you can do it now i guess so the next thing is inviting love interest to your apartment bit of a strange feature but if you do feel like hanging out with the characters in the game or maybe even shagging some of them in your own apartment you can it's not exactly something to write home about but it does help with character development and the world building so i guess it's not bad so now you can also listen to the radio on foot similar to watchdogs you can now dance to some larry old beats whilst walking around the city a cool feature which might distract you from how dead and lifeless the city feels at times or has that been improved too the world feels more alive and i have been very critical of this in my videos on cyberpunk in the past so first up one of the closed off highways is now open and populated with cars which is a nice touch and in terms of more npcs and traffic in general in some areas it's actually been improved and i can confirm this there is definitely more cars on the road but in other areas it's still dead and for some reason not many cars spawn in on consoles this actually might be worse as i have read comments on my videos in the past which did state that traffic density is much lower on consoles so do let me know in the comments if you play on console and what it's like and for christ's sake the issue of seeing the same car spawning in next to each other still happens and this time it's this hideous pink little car that would literally spawn in countless times it really does take you out of the game as soon as you notice it and sticks out like a sore ass surely they can patch this it's been an issue since release poppins are also still very much there and can be distracting if you pay attention new vehicles so there is five new bikes and a Porsche 911 that have been added to the Autofixer website, which is really cool to see. And you can also lean on your motorbike now, allowing you to do wheelies and even flips when going up ramps. To be fair, you would assume this kind of feature would be in the game from the start, as pretty much all open world games, which include motorbikes, allow you to do this i mean think about it they all pretty much do but at least it's now added three years down the line although it feels buggy as hell and just really clunky as soon as you try and do a wheelie i would witness this ugly ass animation that makes you want to vomit all over your dog's legs i'm guessing it's some sort of glitch or bug but it looks horrendous leaning on your bike in the game just feels really bad it's hard to describe without actually playing it yourself improved graphics so the ray tracing overdrive mode has some improvements and the inclusion of dlss ray reconstruction but sadly it doesn't make the game any less demanding to run so if you're on pc make sure to have decent spec to be able to run this game on decent settings as it does look pretty damn good if you're able to play it on high settings in 4k with all the settings cranked up to ultra i don't really think the game looks that much better than before but don't get me wrong it does look amazing so out of all the features in this update everything i've mentioned are the main parts most of you are going to care about but it's definitely worth reading the full patch notes as they have made a lot of small changes and improvements whether it's fixing lots of bugs to even updating sound effects i'll leave a link down below if you want to read the whole list so does this update do enough 
should you play this game again or pick it up for the first time? So in all honesty, the game right now is the best it's ever been due to the many updates made over the years. And you could say it's a bit too late as they have essentially been trying to polish a pig for the last few years and fix the mess they released back in 2020. But I do think Cyberpunk has turned into a decent game and there is fun to be had. It's still massively unpolished in many areas, but the amount of content and things to do is overwhelming and they've done their best to improve the game as much as possible. And along with a cheaper price tag, it's definitely worth playing. But for those like me, who paid $60 when it first came out in 2020 for a buggy, dog shit infested mess, I feel sorry for you because we could have bought the game now for half the price and it's also massively improved instead of needing to wait three damn years. But do comment below your thoughts, I would love to see them and I would also love to know, when did you buy this game? Did you buy it back in 2020? Or did you buy it afterwards? I don't really think much more can be done to improve this game, but I could be wrong. As soon as more updates come out, I'll make a video on it and be as honest as possible. And if you don't want to miss one of those videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you never miss one. And if you would like to find out whether Spider-Man 2 is truly worth playing one month after release and after all the hype, just go ahead and click the card on screen to see a honest take on that. Thank you guys for watching as always and have a great rest of your day.